Welcome to the Powerlifting and Power Ballads podcast, where we bring you a weekly dose of powerlifting news, tips, and training advice with a touch of 80s rock ballads. This podcast is presented by Team Roar Powerlifting, your source of the most comprehensive coaching and meet day preparation. Here are your hosts, Josh Roar and Laura Sturm. Welcome to episode 184. How are you, Josh? I am good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Just got back from vacation. Got yeah, the island that? vibe still going. It was amazing. Where'd you go again? I don't want to tell you because I don't want anyone going there. <laughs> <laughs> it's my place. <laughs> it's my place. It's a, it's the like best island in the Caribbean. And it's not super expensive. And it flies direct from Atlanta. I've never even heard of that. I know, right? So let's keep it that way. No one needs to hear about this. Uh, you can bleep it out. Just bleep it out. Yeah, I should do that. I should just bleep it every time we say. Yes. Every time we say. Yes. Say it one more time so we have multiple beeps. Where'd you go? It was amazing. <laughs> Such good scuba diving. It's like world class scuba diving. And I spent so much time underwater and. It was the first time I think that as a scuba diver, I ever felt like really relaxed underwater. And we went to a giant wreck at 80 something feet, uh, which isn't, you know, super deep, but it's deeper than I had gone on purpose in the past. <laughs> you know, we saw octopus, bioluminescent jellyfish. We went lionfish hunting, just turtles. It was, it was just an amazing time. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Cool. So go visit. Actually, or don't, because I don't want anyone to go there. I'm literally going to beep it out because I think it'd be funny. <laughs> there you go. Good. So unless anybody can read lips, nobody's going to know. And most people don't watch the video anyway. So <laughs> nice. you'll never know. <laughs> For now, we'll keep it a best kept secret because it's an amazing island. Cool. All right. Well, uh, that's cool. Welcome back. Glad Thank you're you. uh, still living the island vibe life right now. We'll see how that goes <laughs> yeah. by Friday. I'll probably be back into work mode and be like, ah, ready to throw my computer. But Or or by the time you're done talking to me, you're like, ah, I hate talking yeah, to you. Maybe, maybe, and maybe we should have like a trigger alert warning right now. If you don't want to listen to people swearing, this is not the episode for you. <laughs> I thought, what are you talking about i thought you were coming back from the island vibe or are you insinuating that i'm going to be swearing yes okay that's yes. possible it's it's highly likely so let's <laughs> which is, get to which, it then which <laughs> which is like the universe flipped upside down i know you're, right? the, you're, you're the chill like island vibe and i'm going to be swearing like crazy huh? yes it's usually opposite interesting okay <laughs> uh so go. Uh, Korea Nationals happened this past weekend. Uh, there was one lifter that um, renewed his pro status. Keenan Lee had a 543.37 dots. Um, he was actually coming in. He had a 575. So I was kind of expecting something in that range from him, which would have put him first on the leaderboard for the pro series. But with the 543 that he did, that actually puts him in eighth place on the leaderboard with raw nationals in two weeks. So there's actually a good chance he could have been the favorite to win the pro series, but there's a high probability that he actually gets bumped off of the top 10 and doesn't even make the pro series final uh, with that 543. So I don't know if that was an intentional number he did, or if he just had a really off day, but yeah, who one of the, I mean, he would have been the favorite, I think to win the pro series in December, but he's, he's likely not going to make the final. So if he had a 575 in another meet, why isn't that um, dot score being carried forward for? Uh, yeah. That was from, that was forward. from two years ago. Ah, so gotcha. you got to do it at specific qualifying meets. Yes. All right. Yeah. So he did it at the, I believe the Arnold in 2022. Nice. 2023, so did, maybe. Arnold is Keenan from the States? Did he travel to? Korea? No, this is this is Korea. This is Korea Nationals. So he's, he's from Korea. Yeah, I think he I believe he's dual citizen because he did the Arnold in 2023. Um and I think he was actually I think he lifted at Raw Nationals last year as well. Um 
as a U.S. lifter, but I think he's I think he resides in in Korea, but I'm not 100 percent sure. So, cool. Anyway, it, while I was on my island vacation, I was wondering, hmm, I wonder what lifters there are here. In That's you're making me beep a lot of things out. <laughs> I know. <laughs> anyway, did you did you uh, recruit? I didn't yet, but at some point. So you're going back soon. Oh, I'm definitely going back. Yes. All right. Well, we'll we make actually some... thought about like seeing if we could work out a, a longer extended stay to try out island living. Wow, you're like serious, serious. Yeah, we really are. So, okay, we'll see what happens. Hopefully, we can work it out. Because wouldn't it be awesome to live in? So, you you so just broad strokes here. Like you are considering. Is it on the table that you would sell the farm and move there? If, what, what we would be thinking. I mean, of is that like a, is that like even a one percent chance that that could happen? Yes. Oh wow. Okay. But it's so we can do our we training. Need to try it out first. So we can do our training camp there. I, I, and, and, yes, and, training a training camp in would be yeah. Cool. Would be sick. Yes. That would be awesome. I, that I, would. I be, could, we'd probably get more turnout. I could because why I could wouldn't you? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. So you're saying instead of sleeping in a barn, yes, on an air mattress, we can go to Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Great idea. Yes. Which in a in a way I'm glad you're beeping it out because I'm not sure I'm completely pronouncing it correctly. <laughs> yeah. Got it. I'm not good. I'm not good. That's fair. Okay. okay. Well, no more because I don't. It takes me forever to find these spots to beep out. So, <laughs> oh sure, no Sorry. more. Okay. All right. Um, more powerlifting. Yeah, more powerlifting. Uh, so, the deadline to bid on regionals is uh, this weekend, August thirty first at ten p.m. Eastern. So, if you are a meet director and you're interested in hosting one of the regional championships in twenty twenty five, you can find more information at usapowerlifting.com dot slash regional. Um, that's basically excuse me all i had there that's all i have to say about that that's all i that's all i have to say about that <laughs> i'm not a smart man <laughs> but i know what regionals are <laughs> nice anyway you did uh, once reenact um parts of forrest gump so that's once amazing. more than once i feel like i live my life as forrest gump <laughs> Every day, accurate, accurate, or some version of Tom Hanks. I have I have the Wilson volleyball upstairs on my shelf from Castaway. Nice, yeah, high proof. Yep. Anyway, okay. Uh, we're really all over the place. Uh, Raw Nationals. We're gonna have to do our little preview here because uh, we won't be recording next week because I will already be in Salt Lake City. Uh, so we actually only have two lifters competing this year. Um, a bunch of our lifters did not sign up in time. Um, so Cindy Yeager and Alicia Webb are both lifting on Sunday morning, both in the 100 kilo class. Uh, Lee's in the open and Masters 2 and Cindy's in the Masters 2. So so I'm out there for a full week. I, I, uh, I fly out Tuesday and teaching the senior national coaching course on Wednesday and then I'm refereeing or doing the score table on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then coaching on Sunday, and then the NGB meeting on Monday, wow. flying home all Tuesday. Week. So yeah, it's a literally full week. So so there won't be a new episode next week, but there will be a unreleased episode that is already scheduled to post uh, next week. So it's an interview that uh, Wade I did with Wade Johnson during Equip Nationals. Um, that was a couple months ago, but since we never posted it, I'm like, yeah, we'll throw that in there. So hmm. there's something new coming out. Nice. Um, but the week after that, we likely will not have a new episode either because like I said, we usually record on Wednesday, on Tuesday, uh, publish it on Wednesday, but I'll be flying all day on Tuesday. So, so this will be the last episode that's recorded in recent memory anyway, uh, until like two weeks from now, three weeks yeah. from now. I don't know. September. Whenever. Yeah, somewhere in September. Sub- somewhere in September, yeah. So cool. All right. Um all right. So here's the meat of this um podcast. 
Yeah. And we're so, going to have to find a title for the podcast in this section. So yeah. what's going on with the Georgia State meet, Josh? So I think we've talked about it before. I've had Kathy Mealy on the podcast and we've talked about how I disagree with the team scoring and how it's done. You know, this all started, I guess for context, let me start with, um, you know, I, I am the one that, that designed this scoring system and basically it allows for a single team champion every year and, and team placings instead of having like a separate men's open team, uh, women's equipped team, et cetera, all the divisions contribute to an overall team score. And it's done by, you know, by formula, by dots, blah, blah, blah. That's not the important part right now. That is still being used. And I still think it's the most fair way to do it with the caveat that it's used as intended. And I'll get to that here in a second. But I guess where the, where the issue started with this in on January 4th of 2022, which was six and a half weeks out from the 2022 Georgia State meet, there was an email sent that a lifter can score a max of twice. But the the caveat there was a lifter can only score twice if there are less than 10 lifters on the team. So in the in the only rationale that I got from that was that they believe that is the most fair way to score it. And the, it, it, it keeps from a large team having a big advantage. Here's the, here's the problem with that. First of all, the original intent was that a lifter can score in every single division that they're able to enter, which traditionally is the maximum of four divisions, which is, is similar to track and field. Any one athlete can, can compete in four events, which allows you to you know, contribute to your team. So as an example, if you have an open lifter and a junior lifter, they can enter open full power, junior full power, open bench only, and junior bench only, which are four scoring divisions. And the bench only is weighted differently. So a first place finish in a bench only division gets gets a team seven points and a first place finish in a full power division gets a team 12 points. So anyway, fast forward, and now they're saying, first of all, they're saying you can only score a max of two divisions, period, but you can only score two divisions if you have less than 10 lifters on your roster. So as an example, if you have a team of six lifters, you'd be allowed to have four of their lifters score in two divisions, and the other six could only score in one division. So the problem then comes, let's say you have a team that has five great lifters that can compete in two divisions, and just that for easy math, let's theoretically say they can win best lifter in each division, which again, it's, it's, it's not by weight class. It's, it's overall best lifter by formula. So you still have to be the best to get the top of the points. But here's the problem. If we have, if we add then the rest of our team that may be first time lifters that are not going to score points that now takes away from what our five really good lifters are able to contribute just because we add additional people. And that never made sense to me. That actually is counterintuitive and it actually takes away from the aspect of building a team community um, because coaches are now in order to be more competitive are almost they're They're having to choose between, you know, including their entire team or excluding some other team so that their higher lifters can score in multiple divisions. It just never made sense to me why that is, why that is, is different for different size teams. Like the criteria should be the same across the board because whether you're a big team or a small team, the placings are done by the best overall lifter in each division. It has nothing to do with how many are on a team. So it just doesn't seem to to make sense. So here's another, uh, here's another problem with it is there's the now potential for teammates to block points um, from each other and hurt the team by being in multiple divisions. So as an example, if I have a 15 person roster team and lifter a gets first place in the open, which is 12 points and first place in the masters, that's 12 points and lifter B gets second in the master's division, that's nine points. So hypothetically, if lifter a and B are on a team of nine or less, they would collaboratively, those three, those two lifters would score 33 points, two divisions from lifter a one division from lifter B. But now if you take those same lifters placing the same exact way, 
and they're on a team of 10 or more, now the, instead of 33 points, those two lifters now only collaboratively score 21 points because the 12 points from the second division of lifter A can no longer be used. And there was actually, in 2023, the wrong team was announced as the winner because they forgot to account for this. The the team that mathematically, in my opinion, should have won was announced the winner actually had to be then retracted and given to a different team because the team that was announced as the winner had more than 10 lifters and they had a couple lifters in multiple divisions that then were not able to be used. So those essentially became dead points. Nobody could use them. And this has actually never happened to us personally, um, but there's a high probability it could because we do have a lot of lifters in multiple divisions. And you know, my opinion is if you're the best lifter in the division, you should get the points for that regardless if you're in two divisions or not. Right. So like, I just don't see any reason why a team should be punished for having lifters enter additional divisions. Mm. And this is the part that I can't, I, I could, I, to this day, I cannot get a sound reasoning and explanation other than we believe this is the most fair way to do it. So why I'm, why I'm bringing this up now for the last three years, I've been, promised that there would be a team meeting, basically a, a Zoom meeting or something with all of the registered teams in Georgia to discuss the team scoring and, you know, let everybody have input. And, you know, I, again, I, I, maybe I'm, it's my fault for letting this, this go so long, but I finally, you know, I sent a, a follow-up email a month ago uh, to Kathy Mealy and Siraj Saeed, the, the state chair and meet directors, asking when there would be a meeting and I got no response. So I sent a follow-up email last week and got no response until August 26th. Uh, I finally got a uh, phone call from Siraj and basically saying that we're not going to have a team meeting uh, because I'm the only one that has, has voiced opposition to the way the scoring's done. Have you so, talked to other coaches? I have talked to a few and other people have said that they, they don't think it's, right either. So I encourage them to reach out to hmm. uh, Kathy or Siraj, but apparently nobody has because according to them, I'm the only one that has fault with it. So what I am going to do, and I'm just going to put this out there, I will be messaging every single registered club in Georgia and just explaining where I'm coming from with this scoring. It is, it's the only truly fair way to do it. In my opinion, it's unfair in a lot of ways when the reason for doing it is because it makes it more fair. And I don't understand how that, how that is the case. Um, I so, just want to hear more about when the wrong team was announced as the winner, like out loud. Yeah. They gave the trophy and everything to them. Oh. And, then, and then, and then I'm actually, I, I audit the team scores obviously because I, you know, it's just what I do. And I actually found the error and emailed them. And, you know, shortly after they corrected it, posted it on social media that, you know, the wrong team was announced as the winner and they'll be oh, sending the trophy no. to the correct team and everything. So um, it wasn't even at the meet where it was corrected. No, it was, it was after that. It, it was like a week after the Oh, fact. that's awful. And that's I, like finding out you got best lifter. Yeah. And, you know, mistakes happen, but, you know, that's the other side. The, 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 the adding up of the scoring is so much easier if it's just straightforward. Right. Best lifter is this many points, second, et cetera. But now you actually have to go through and audit. Okay. How many were on the roster? Okay. These are now dead points that nobody gets. Right. It just makes it way more complicated. And I, like, I think objectively harder for less, the meat director. Well, like, harder for the meat why? director, but I think way less fair. I just don't think yeah, that, right. you know, if you're the best lifter in that division, you earn those team points. Why don't you get credit for them? If you have other people on your team, you don't. If you don't have other people on your team, you do. Like, what right. difference does that make? It's the same lifter. Right. Absolutely. 10 total scores count, period. So, you know, where those come from, it should come from the best scorers on the team. Right. And it shouldn't necessarily be, you know, you shouldn't be handicapped because you have additional people on your team. If If, if that's the case, if that's how they want to do it, then they should have where you can only submit so many people on your team roster, but this was meant to be an inclusive scoring system where you can have as many people on your team roster as you want. And then at the end of the day, the best one, the best scorers are the ones that are used. Right. Well, this is like taking away from that community building because like 
strategically, I'm at a disadvantage to bring anybody more than my five best lifters. Right. When, you know, I have a team of 20 or 30 lifters that we are family. I'm not going to shun them and say, no, you guys are, you know, you're part of the team, but you're not really going to be part of the team because, you know, we want to, because you're going to bring us down basically. Right. That that's a, that's a, that's a shitty thing to, to, to do, to to have to, to have to decide between. Right. Because you want to have your team all, you know, as a community go to that meet. And will anybody, I mean, will any teams actually do this? Like, to date like we've never done that we've entered our whole team because you know like we're gonna we're gonna compete with our whole team like we're not gonna leave people off the roster when they're part of our team just so we can score better but the point is that should a coach should never have to be put in that position because it shouldn't matter that there's other people on the team that aren't scoring points that now invalidate points that other members have scored right like why should it matter how many other lifters are on the roster but yeah, well, anyway. and I just don't get the whole like, why fix something that's not broken? Right, right. Like, I, I think so. So the I I think the idea, and I'm I'm speculating here because I've never been given a good reason. I think that the reason is to encourage more teams to enter, but they're encouraging more teams to enter by giving an advantage, a competitive advantage to small mm-hmm. teams with low number of lifters, and that is being said is more fair and i don't understand how that's more fair right so yeah well and having that initial change come out um six weeks before the meet when the team deadline was like days away right after everybody was already entered right after everyone's already entered that to me is just like a a what the fuck moment because like you could make decisions as a coach or, you know, the team lead or whatever based on how things were, but n- now it's too late. Um, yeah. Of course it's 2022. I get it. It's water under the bridge, but I don't know. I just, I still don't understand this whole thing. And, and, and to, to, to be fair on that, they did offer to refund additional divisions for lifters that were entered based on that change. But the problem I had was I had multiple lifters that only signed up for that meet to contribute to the team points that if they could only score once would have never even entered the meet. So anyway, um, so I do want to say these things because I've, I've kind of gone all in on this uh, concept here. Um, Like I'm not speaking bad about Siraj and Kathy. Uh, I do believe that they want to grow the sport and do the right thing. And I think they believe they are doing the right thing. I just strongly disagree that this is the right thing. And, and um, you know, I think, I think there's validity to to what I'm saying here, but it just doesn't want to be heard. Mostly because I'm the only one that has brought this up. So, um, like I said, I'm going to email all the clubs in in Georgia and you know basically just lay out my concerns and ask if they would be interested in having a meeting about this. Again, um, the meet director at the end of the day can choose to to keep it as is or change it, that's their prerogative. But the fact that they refuse to have a meeting where we can actually discuss this with all of the registered parties. And I'm not even asking, I'm not even asking for this to be unilaterally changed because I said so. I'm specifically asking for a meeting with all of the registered clubs so I can make my presentation on why I think it's not right. And then let everybody discuss and decide if they think it should be changed or not. And if, if the majority of teams say, no, leave it as is, Okay, right. I've I've done my due diligence. There's nothing else for me to do. But I really feel like if people knew about this, that they would, you know, have have concerns with how it's set up, mm. and, and the reasoning for why it's set up. Like I just, it, it, to me, it does not make it more fair. No, you know, it is what it is. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, the best scores should get to use those points, and that's that's just kind of how I feel about it. It's just dis- it's disenfranchising like lifters that are on bigger teams. It's like taking away some of their scoring potential, and I, I just don't think that's right. Uh, so going back to Siraj and Kathy, like I think they they do have their best. I do think they they are doing what they feel is best. I just again have a problem with you know them not being willing to present it to the interested parties for them to discuss. Um, so I guess that's why I'm I'm gonna call on all the teams to contact them, which they've both said on, on this podcast and different episodes that 
anybody can contact them directly. The state chair email is georgia at usapowerlifting.com. And Kathy Mealy's email is kathy at mealypowerlifting.com. Um, so if anybody, you know, does have concerns about this, they can contact them directly. They've on this podcast have said that point blank, anybody can contact them at any point with concerns. Um, so I wouldn't, if you do, you know, have an issue with the scoring or want to at least have a discussion about it, I would encourage you to contact them and voice your opinion. Yeah. And that's all I have to say about that. Same. So like I said, that's just been the most frustrating part for me. Like, I just want to have the conversation with, with everybody, everybody that's interested. Right. And that's what I told them too, is like, I ran this event from 2011 to 2020 and the scoring did change a few different times, but the change was based on the fact that the group of teams that were participating wanted this change. It wasn't just something that I did unilaterally. Mm -hmm. So it was a, it was a group decision every time. So Anyway, enough of that. <laughs> it's voting week. Voting week? Yes. Voting on what, Josh? You know what. I know. I just want our listeners to know. <laughs> I know. Uh, so the top five karaoke song list, the tournament does begin. We're going to actually start voting on Friday, August 30th. So in a couple of days here. Uh, our first, so uh, I'll announce our, so we've published all of the lists individually on our Instagram at PL Ballads Podcast. So if you want to go through and, and read everybody's reasonings for why they chose each song and also whether they sang them karaoke, whether they sang them in the shower or if they would sing them karaoke, all of that stuff information is on there. So you can get a, a solid understanding of each list. Those are posted on our Instagram at PL Ballads Podcast. Now the first round of voting, uh, we have three lists that are on a bye week. So the blue list, the purple list, and the yellow list, they all have a bye week. So they will not be in the tournament this week. They will be awaiting the winners of week one. So uh, the matchups going into round one, it's going to be the gray list versus the cyan list, the red list versus the white list, the magenta list versus the pink list, the black list versus the green list, and the brown versus the orange list. I feel like so, we should like get some really obscure color names because that would just be more fun. Like I want to be the puce list. So I don't know who any of these lists are except for uh, my own. And uh, I know one other person because they told me, but these were all done anonymously. Chat GPT created 13 color names that were not, supposed to be like more popular or whatever than another one. Right. And then the names were assigned random. So the color lists were assigned randomly to the list of the 13 lists. And then those 13 lists were randomly ranked one through 13 to then be inserted into the tournament based on rankings. So it's all completely random. I, I legit still don't know who every list is because I have not looked. I have that hidden so it's a completely random anonymous and it'd be funny it's funny because how i know uh the one other person's list is because they complained about the color that they were assigned <laughs> <laughs> oh that's awesome i don't like pink yeah so yeah, like that you know it is what it is but but yeah so voting will be on friday <laughs> um you can find the voting in the stories on instagram of pl ballads podcast um, so until we have a new episode, we're probably going to actually have a couple rounds of voting that take place before we actually have another another uh, podcast about it. All right. So watch on Instagram for all that voting because yep. that's that's where the fun and the interactiveness of our podcast comes in. Yep. Cool. Like it. That's all I got. So next week we'll have our interview with Wade Johnson from back at Equip Nationals, and then we'll probably have a week off, and then we'll be back with uh, with some – updates on the tournament see where everybody is see who's still left see who's still standing yep nice, nice. all right well have have a great time at raw nationals josh all right right, will do uh enjoy living the rest of your uh island life until life gets back to reality i'm just gonna i'm gonna just put on some reggae and listen to some steel drums there you <clears> go and, uh, sounds good dream about Damn it. That's one more bleep I got to do. <laughs> I should leave that one in at the very end. So if anybody listened that long, they get it. That's right.
All Don't right. tell them. All yeah. right. Bye, Josh Roar. Later. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed today's episode of the Powerlifting and Power Ballads podcast, please remember to subscribe and share it with your friends.